Hey guys, W Green Tech here, and today Apple had the Let's Talk About iPhone keynote, and as we all expected, they were going to release the iPhone, release other new products and new features along with this. So I'm just going to run through the event real quick, highlight the important things, and hopefully you guys like this video. So to start off, Apple, with every keynote, goes into their product updates and talks about the success their products had. And just quick bullet points on that is the they start off talking about the Mac and OS X line and just said how it has much higher adoptance rate than Windows 7, along with the Mac sales are growing much more rapidly than the PC sales, which have staggered about 4% growth recently. Uh, then they continued to talk about the success of iPods, where they have 78% of the market share, sold over 300 million cumulative iPhone or iPods since uh, 2001, and they sold 45 million iPods just last year. Pretty substantial numbers. Then they went on and talked about iTunes with 16 billion songs downloaded. Loaded, no one really cares much about that. Then they went into the iPhone and talked about basic things, but more so priding themselves on customer satisfaction. The iPhone, so they said that they had 50% better growth than the market. They said they had number one customer satisfaction. So, you know, they're saying they're growing faster, number one customer satisfaction, but they said there's still room to grow, saying they only have 5% of mobile phone uh, market share. And then they went into their newest product, the iPad, and talked about how they're, again, the number one tablet on the market, 74% market share, and then they kind of rolled into the fact that there's 250 million iOS devices. That means iPod Touch, iPhone, and iPad. Just those three devices. There's 250 million iOS devices, which means everyone in the U.S. pretty much has an iOS device. Pretty substantial. Uh, and then they went into iOS itself, saying it's the number one mobile operating system, uh, which is about 10% higher than Android, which is a little surprising to me. Android is kind of creeping up on them. And then went into the App Store, which has 1 billion downloads per month. One billion. That's a lot. All right, so after Apple uh, tried to wow us with their product updates with certain facts that they actually kind of did, I was surprised by a lot of them, they went into talking about a new application that they made similar to like iMovie or GarageBand for these iOS devices, and this one's called Cards. Now, I don't think it's going to succeed. Uh, I'm curious what you guys think. Please comment below if, if you think it will or why you do, but... It allows you to send greeting cards for three dollars uh, in the U.S., five dollars internationally. I just don't think it's gonna, you know, take off. It's just one of those things for them to make money and send. But it'll be, you know, cool to check out. Now, iOS five was talked about again today with the same features. They update us about what newsstand reminders, iMessage, the, the feature of Wi-Fi sync, split keyboards for the iPad two, and notifications. They talked about all that briefly pretty much review for all of us who knew about it from the WWDC. And the next thing that they introduced, which is also part of iOS 5 that was never talked about, is Find My Friends. Now, it's pretty much a way for uh, you to say, okay, in this application, uh, I allow my friends to uh, see my location, and then you go on a map, and it shows where all your friends are within a certain amount of miles, and if they're close to you, you might as well hang out with them. So it's, it's a way for you to kind of see where people are, I think it's a little uh, up top, but it will be a feature that people will use. I'm sure they'll use it, uh, you know, if they're in college or something on a college campus or something like that, see who friends, who their friends are around. Now, that is iOS 5, and it will be released on October 12th, and I will be making a uh, video about all these features when it comes out, so uh, just uh, subscribe above if you want to see that video. Uh, I will have it in about a week or so. And I'll post uh, it on uh, YouTube and on Facebook and Twitter. So you can follow me there as well. The links are down below. Then they talked about uh, iCloud, which will also be released October 12th. And if you don't know what iCloud is, real quick, it pretty much just uh, pretty much stores all your stuff you know, in a cloud that you don't have on your computer, your iPhone, or your iPad. But all your devices can access it and download your file. So it stores certain files up there. Like, for example, on your iPhone, if you take a picture, it will store it up there um, and allow you to access it. And it will sync your contacts from your Mac and your iPhone together or all onto your iPad. So it syncs it all together, your calendars, things like that, which will be really nice. And then 
Uh, it allows you to download purchased products, which will save you memory on your, your phone. Say you don't want a certain song, you can delete it. But then, oh, wait, your friend wants you wants a song. You're like, oh, I bought that. I can go download it right now off my phone. So those are the pretty much the quick features um, about iCloud. So, you know, if you want to see um, what those are all about, I'll have a video again, so just subscribe above. All right, then after those announcements, Apple sort of got into the meat of this event, and they started talking about the iPod Nano and the iPod Touch. Now, it was sort of a disappointment in my mind. Uh, I'd be curious to see what you guys think. Uh, the iPod Nano, it updated the clock application with 16 new clocks, so it can kind of go with those accessories that go around your wrist, um, one of which of the clocks is like a Mickey Mouse clock, uh, and one kind of looks like a Rolex or something. So it's pretty cool, I think, that they updated those clocks. It was something that they could have done in the first one, but it's Apple, so they kind of slow, you know, slowly release things. Um, then they improved Nike uh, Plus, which is the thing that you put in your shoe when you run, uh, and the statistics that it carries with it. Not a big thing, uh, but the big thing was that they did drop the price. And for an 8 gigabyte iPod Nano, you only have to pay $129. And for $150, you get a 16 gigabyte iPod Nano, which is pretty cheap for the amount of songs you can put on that device. So that's a good... Uh, you know, good news for us consumers, but it's nothing new really besides like the price drop in that iPod Nano. And then the iPod Touch, it did introduce a white model, but there's no hardware changes, which means no 3G. I know there was rumors about a 3G model similar to the iP iPad. Uh, there is no 3G. I'm curious, you know, is that disappointment to you guys? Were you guys going to get that instead of the iPhone? Let me know below. Uh, you know, I thought that they would at least do something besides just introduce a white model. And the prices still uh, are at $199 for an 8 gigabyte, and it goes all the way up to $399 for a 64 gigabyte model. So I would I would kind of start off with just saying that that's a little disappointing, uh, and we, I guess you know we'll have to wait for the next round of iPods to really see uh, where Apple's going with this. After Apple announced the iPod lineups, they went into the iPhone, kind of a easy segue, but. They didn't announce the iPhone 5, uh, they announced the iPhone 4S, so it's another disappointing thing in my mind. I wasn't very pleased with this uh, keynote as much as I have been in the past, but they did announce the iPhone 4S, and there are some good features about this. And starting off with the iPhone 4S is that it is now part of Sprint. Now you can, So it's not going to be released uh, supposedly on the same day, but it is going to be uh, available on Sprint. So that is good news too. Uh, a lot of people out there that have contracts with Sprint and weren't able to switch. Um, and it probably saves Sprint because people want the iPhone. Um, but on the outside, this iPhone 4S is the same phone. No redesign, nothing. Um, but on the inside of the phone, it's all new. Uh, it has a dual core A5, which uh, should make it about two times faster. Um, and it has a dual core GPU, which supposedly makes this seven times uh, better in graphics. That similar to what the i the difference between the iPad and the iPad 2, um, the uh, uh, antenna is, has been redesigned, um, so we shouldn't have antenna gate um, or whatever. Yeah, Apple, good job way to redesign your antenna finally, um, and then supposedly the downloads will be twice as fast. I think up to 14.4. Megabytes per second or something like that as opposed to 7.2, which is where it was before um, And now it is a dual mode GSM and CDMA phone Therefore, it's uh, going to be a world phone and it's only gonna be one phone It's not going to be the CDM CDMA model and the GSM model. It's just gonna be one phone uh, and They announced an 8 megapixel camera and they announced little things about this camera like better um when it's lighting or color traction when it's darker in the room things like that facial recognition um, but it is an 8 megapixel camera and it can record in 1080p video so uh, anyone out there that wants to make videos 1080p video and the battery was improved as well they um I don't really know what the iPhone 4 numbers are but the iPhone 4s should have about 3g uh, 8 hours of 3g talk time 14 hours of 2G talk time, 6 hours of 3G browsing, and 9 hours of Wi-Fi browsing. So those are pretty pretty good. They should get you through the day for the most part. The 6 hours of 3G browsing is going to only get you probably half the day. But besides that, it's going to get you throughout most of the day. And then video, you get about 10 hours of playback. And music, you get about 40. So 
if you're going to be just listening to music, you should be in good shape with that. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with those numbers. It, most smartphones, you don't see numbers that will continuously get you throughout the day. So those do look like good numbers there. Uh, then the final thing is they talked about when this phone will be released. Um, and the release date in the U.S., uh, U.S., Canada, Australia, U.K., France, Germany, and Japan is October 14th. Uh, and again, the prices are pretty much similar to the iPhone 4. It's 199 for 16 gigabytes, 299 for 32, and 399 for 64. As well, and this phone can also be pre-ordered as well. Uh, and those start October 7th. So you have about uh, three days until pre-orders start, and um, a week or so until uh, you can go in the store and buy this thing. Uh, and now that they announced that these this iPhone 4s is out. Price drops have come to the older generation iPhone. So the old uh, iPhone 4, the 16 gigabyte now is only $99, where uh, it was 200, and the that'll be available on Verizon and AT&T. And the 3GS is now free. Sign a contract, you get the 3GS free. But then again, that's only on AT&T. So those are uh, some good uh, good updates, not ideal updates where we get a bigger screen or certain things like that. Uh, so let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, if it was good, bad, are you going to get the phone, are you not? Um, I am getting the phone. I will have a video walkthrough of the new iPhone and unboxing. So please subscribe above if you want to see that or like me on Facebook or Twitter. The links will be down below. So remember that I am getting the new phone and I will have videos about everything once I get the phone. So make sure to subscribe and stay in the loop.